Would you look at this thing? Look at this tiny, tiny little computer. This is what's called a Intel stick. Intel makes these beautiful little computers. You can actually run Linux directly onto these. But the great thing is on one end, you've just got a HDMI port. HDMI connector that you run directly into a screen. If your screen doesn't have HDMI, you can run a different sort of adapter to it. And then on the side, you've got a USB port, an old school USB port, and also a USB-C. And that's a USB-C cable that runs into the actual power adapter, which also has a couple of USB ports next to it. Now, I love these because you can run multiple flavors of Linux directly onto this. For example, Ubuntu, CentOS, even Kali Linux. If you do any sort of pen testing for ethical reasons, these things are great because they're small, they're compact, you just plug them in, and it's a full computer with a built-in hard drive, built-in CPU, built-in RAM, and a small little motherboard. They're absolutely amazing. Before we do get into this, we run a tech channel here. Every single week, we release new videos on tech. So why don't you click on that subscription button, click on the bell so you don't miss out on anything. You're gonna need three things. You're gonna need one of these. You're gonna need a USB stick that is big enough and an ISO of Linux, whatever flavor you need. So regardless of the ISO that you're wanting, you can download Kali Linux, for example, straight off the Kali website. You can also just go and download Ubuntu, which is what we're gonna be doing here. We're gonna be downloading Ubuntu, going into our browser, searching for Ubuntu, going to their website, and then selecting that. You're gonna download the desktop version, and here it is, download. And then the download should actually start automatically downloading that ISO. Once it's downloaded, we're gonna download Rufus, which is used to create those USB sticks. You're gonna to go to the Rufus website and download the latest Rufus version available. We then install Rufus, should be a very simple installation of Rufus. Plug the USB stick into the side of the stick or into the power adapter, which then will be formatted by Rufus to create your bootable ISO. You then select the ISO that you actually want to be using. In our case, it's gonna be Ubuntu, making sure that the settings are similar to what you're seeing right here on my screen. And then we click on Start. That USB stick is gonna be completely formatted. That ISO is then gonna be written to that USB, of course, deleting all the data that is sitting on that USB. This will take a little bit of time, but then once it's done, you'll then have a bootable USB stick with Ubuntu, which you can then use to boot your computer into Ubuntu and start the installation. All right, we now hook up our Intel stick to our computer and then we turn it on. Now, what we're gonna to need to do is on our keyboard, we're gonna go and press F2 on that very first screen to then boot into the BIOS. Then go into the boot area, go into secure boot configuration and we wanna turn secure boot to disabled if it's not already disabled. This will ensure that other OS's can be installed as well. We now restart to then boot into our USB stick. Power the thing back on and press F10 on our keyboard. You then select your USB stick, which I'm sure is now plugged into your computer to be able to then boot into your Linux. And if you're seeing this, great. It means you've actually successfully booted in. And here is the installation of Ubuntu. And then you're gonna follow just the standard prompts to install Linux, including the country, the keyboard layout. You're then gonna select a full installation of Linux. The hard drive on your actual Intel stick is gonna be completely removed and erased, so all the data is gonna be gone, so just be aware of that. You then select your username and password that you wanna to use to actually log into Linux, and then the installation will continue. After a bit of time, Linux will install, you then restart, and then you actually log in with that username and password, and then that is done. So there you go, Linux running on our small Intel stick. Do what you do, subscribe, like, comment, anything you do on the YouTube machine. Stay tuned for my next video where we talk about all things tech.